First things first, as you're all aware, we were meant to lift all the restrictions or most of the restrictions. Actually, yeah, that was the last restriction, actually, um, in a couple of weeks or maybe next week, actually, on the 21st. And unfortunately, that's now been pushed back to the 19th because of the new Indian variant and all this other jazz that they're sort of kind of, you know, beating us down with. And again, I would be lying if I'm saying I didn't expect it. I kind of was in the back of my head as much as I was trying to be optimistic about the return of being able to go back on the dance floor and return to nightlife, go out in nightclubs and all that jazz. I really was thinking in the back of my head, like, you know what? especially how we kind of blazed through all the other stages and all the other restrictions kind of got lifted without any sort of you know bother no real hoopla i really did feel like we're gonna really end up stumbling on the last hurdle and when everyone was talking about the indian variant and then the media and the press and the journalists went into a bit of a you know scaremongering kind of a overdrive whenever you see journalists you know writing op-eds about a variant and getting really scared about anything it's always a sign that they're kind of either being fed by government officials to leak stuff or they're purposely trying to set a narrative. And what that narrative was set, it was very difficult to get to a common sense approach of like, no, let's just analyze what's going on. How many people does this variant actually affect? Does the vaccine still work against it? You know, all these sort of things weren't really looked at. It was more so, okay, let's just panic because there's new variants come out. We don't want to risk any more lives being lost, obviously. And because of, in my own humble opinion, you know, I'm not really into politics, but regarding how terribly we dealt with covid you know the first half of the year or the first no right the first half of the year or first half of the year, yeah. first half was the end of the last year it feels like the government are going you know are being extra cautious in an effort to kind of distance themselves from any kind of blame which is really sad because you'd imagine that they'll try to do what's best for the country regardless of if it makes them look bad or it makes them look good you know regardless of it makes them look bad but instead they just want to make sure that they kind of you know ensure that no one blames them when the dust settles right when we finally get to a point where we can kind of you know have some distance and kind of review and analyze as to what actually occurred during this terrible two years or so and start pointing the finger they don't want to be the at the end of it right they want to be as kind of blame free as possible that's essentially what they're doing so all these delays all of these kind of reviews and this kind of using of inact you know inaccurate data to kind of make your decisions it's mostly a kind of um job safety thing right it's less so about looking after the country and making sure that they all have their cushy jobs to go to which you know you can't blame people you know we're all kind of operating within our own self-interest but you'd imagine people that work in government that they'd have a little bit more of a civic duty about them in it a little bit more that kind of ties them to that job that kind of makes them wake up in the morning and want to put in ungodly hours or whatever it may be but you know it's not the case so this is courtesy of bbc news it says lockdown easing in england delayed until the 19th of july 19th it says here the final stage of easing lockdown restrictions is eased the 9th of july it means that most remaining curbs on social contact will continue beyond june 21st when they had been due to be lifted so my big plan of heading up into egg and finding myself a dark corner and unloading a bag of kit directly into my nostrils is going to have to wait a few more weeks specifically four more weeks before i can do that and who knows by four more weeks i might be completely bored i might have moved on for ketamine i might be like you know what i'm just going to drink a flipping you know a monster any energy drink and i'm going to spike that with maybe a couple of other bits and bobs who knows oh so annoying man i guess my cat dreams are gonna have to wait for another time it says here the limit on the guest um will be removed but venues will still have to adhere to the other rules prime minister boris johnson said that there would be a review after two weeks and he was confident that the delay would not need longer than four so there's a review after two they can change things but for the most part they are kind of briefing everybody that it's definitely going to be the four weeks that they've kind of specified the two is basically you know optimistic <sighs> However, he told Downing Street Press Conference that he would not rule out the possibility of the date to be pushed back further. Of course, I have to say that just to kind of cover their bases. I wouldn't be too angry or too triggered by that sort of thing. So relax. It says here, scientists advising the government had warned of the significant resurgence in people needing hospital treatment for COVID-19 if stage four of the easing of lockdown went ahead on June 21st. It comes amid raising cases driven by the more transmissible Delta variant, which is first identified in India. The Indian thing is so triggering when you think about the amount of days that it took for India to be placed on a red list, even though the neighboring countries, which were highly, you know, which probably had as high numbers, if not close to what India was currently at, at that time, were on the red or amber list before India was. It's just like, 
the closing of the borders thing has been such an interesting and bizarre thing to watch from afar, isn't it? You just you would imagine with a conservative government, the one thing that they'd want to do would be to somehow you know solidify the borders, close the borders, prevent immigrants from I don't know whatever all that kind of nonsense that they kind of go on about. You would imagine they'd use COVID as a best excuse for them to kind of you know enact some of those changes, but they didn't want to do it. They were really hesitant to kind of you know close the borders very hesitant to do all the little kind of um what are they called the quarantine hotel things all the things that kind of would have helped us all the things that kind of seemed inconsequential in that they seemed insignificant at the time would have definitely added to us combating the virus right now we would have been in a far better place in terms of the systems and the processes set in play and just the general habits of the you know passengers and stuff because i've heard of people that were returning I've heard stories of people that are returning from to UK airports having visited like a let's say an amber country and still coming in contact with somebody that come from a red country. There was no separation when they got to the airport, it was just like a free for all. So it kind of removed the whole you know, point of having the red and amber list in the first place, right? And then the COVID, you know, quarantine hotel things as well was a mess. Like, I just don't understand. It's so odd. We have a conservative government that doesn't wanna, you know, close our borders. Or doesn't want to restrict it for a short period of time to ensure that we kind of you know get to a place that we can open things up again and now we're in a position we're having to delay things more you know whole industries are being shaken to their core people's jobs are fundamentally at risk i think at this point because like the other times that lockdowns or lifting of restrictions got kind of delayed what ends up happening is that what was it called it's like a supply chain right if you're owning a bar or whatever so you have to order stuff way ahead in time way ahead of time you have to kind of set things in motion in, in in the hope that they arrive at a set time so that, that you can get it stocked up in your bar and then ready to open up or your club or whatever. So now that we're in this position, what all those deliveries that are due to come in are going to be sitting around for another month, which might mean another month of what wastage of stuff that you probably didn't have money to pay for in the first place. And you were hoping maybe, hey, let me get a loan or let me lend some money or whatever you did to make it work in the hope that I'm going to make it back within that first kind of month. And now even that first month of people partying, I'm still I'm still a bit um, skeptical about this idea that it's going to be a great renaissance in club culture and stuff and going out. I think for the most part, people don't really understand or appreciate the fundamental changes that COVID and all this lockdown stuff has kind of caused people. People have changed where they live. They've changed professions. They've changed relationships, right? That It's been a whole complete 360 and or a whole complete kind of, you know, root and stem analysis of your life completely people have done during this whole entire time and if you haven't you've probably wasted the opportunity to do so right because this is the perfect time to do it because everyone's life's been basically put on hold and i think a lot of people who are kind of you know maybe a, the passing interest kind of person about going to clubs have maybe turned off it and decided to do other things with their time and even if that isn't the case i still think there might be a good let's say two to three weeks of People going out week after week after week, getting absolutely plastered. And like I said, I'm at, you know, finding dark corners and clubs to sniff whatever they want. I'm sure that will happen. But then after the fact, I think there's going to be a real kind of leveling off and there's going to be a lot of places pretty empty. So a lot of the kind of revenue generating opportunities for these clubs are usually going to be, I think, around the first maybe two weeks after it's opened, right? after the restrictions have been lifted. So at this delay, it just kind of adds to the kind of malaise that people are having. We're like, you know what? I've got these other hobbies now that are filling my time. I don't mind going to restaurants and bars with my friends and eating dinner there and having a good time and hearing a pretty good, decent playlist over the speakers or I don't know, whatever. People's habits have kind of changed a little bit. So all this stuff is negatively going to be affecting the actually the actual opening up of the economy and of the nightlife economy, Pacific and hospitality and stuff. So... The damage is really, really far reaching. It continues. It says, <clears throat> Mr. Johnson said going ahead with stage four on June 21st would mean a real possibility of the virus outrunning the vaccine leading to thousands more deaths, which could otherwise have been avoided. The delay would give the NHS a few more crucial weeks, he said, to get people like vaccinated, he said, adding that while the link between infections and hospital admissions had been weakened, it had not been severed. And again, how can we, we oh, these fucking buzzwords continue we'll move to the position every day and if after two weeks we have a conclusion that the risk has diminished then we reserve the possibility to proceed to step four and fully reopening sooner so it's still a possibility but i doubt it at a certain stage we're going to have to learn to live with the virus 
and manage as best as we can. Adding, addressing MPs in the Commons later, Health Secretary Matt Hancock said the decision not to ease restrictions next week had been made with a heavy heart, but the government's four tests for easing restrictions, one of which um, is that the risks are not fundamentally changed by new variants, had not been met. He said that easing, extra testing, sorry, facilities and access to vaccines would be rolled out in more areas of the country, while vaccinations will be opened up on Tuesday in England to people aged 23 and 24. So there's clearly a push to get things back up and running as soon as possible. Um, they obviously see the damage that this is going to cause for sure going forward. But ugh, I don't know, man. Like I said, I'm not I'm not surprised. I'm not, I'll be alive. I said I didn't expect it. I kind of had a feeling there was going to be a, a bump at the end of the road for sure. Um, it's just a bummer for people that work in that industry, isn't it? People that actually had have a life that's attached to clubs and going out and whatnot who have basically missed an you know, opportunity to reopen sooner and get back to their, you know, regular scheduled um, lifestyles, have missed out on opportunity. Obviously, the owners of these places who have been kind of struggling and maybe on the last legs of getting any kind of furlough or support from the government, it's going to be hard for them to. I'm just hoping that when it does open, even though I'm skeptical, people are going to come out, hoping that people do come out, hoping that people do go and buy tickets. They go and queue up. They go and spend a lot of money at the bar. Because, you know, these places are going to need everyone's help in order to kind of get back on their feet. For sure, for sure, for sure.